Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. The pattern that I chose to tie for you today is a fly known as the Clown Shoe Caddis. This was created by Jay Zimmerman. This is a pattern that's, rep that, that's meant to represent a caddis, possibly in the um, emerger stage. Um, this pattern is also commonly known as the Boulder Creek Caddis. Well to start off with, I am tying with an ADOT um, brown tying thread and I'm going to be tying in a piece of vinyl ribbing. Let me get this tied in, then I'll show you some various colors, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So I have my vinyl ribbing tied in. I tied it in just a little bit forward from the, um, the hook point. So if you're looking straight up, I'm just tying this straight back towards about, we'll say halfway to two thirds of the way down the bend of this hook. So I'm gonna get down there, uh, make a couple wraps back up, and I'll just stop there for a moment. I'll tell you a little bit about this, this vinyl rib. I'm using uh, this vinyl rib, it's a small in an olive color. Let me zoom out, I'll show you a couple other ones. Um, I also will tie this pattern in a white and in this fluorescent, which I really like for the green caddis. So these are the three most common colors that I tie it with. You can also tie it in black um, and a couple other variations for some stoneflies and like, like the, uh, the yellow sally. Um, but the one thing I want to mention is that for the original pattern, you simply will tie in this this underbody, if you want to call it that, and then tie back up to the middle point. And once you get to that middle point, you will stop and simply bring your vinyl rib back up to about right here and tie off. I'm going to show you a little trick, a little variation of this pattern. I have a little piece of tinsel that I have. Um, this is something you could find around the holidays, around Christmas time. And I'm going to tie it in a little ways up from where I had tied off my vinyl rib. So I'm just going to tie that in and wrap this forward. I'm going to pull this relatively tight while you're doing that. Now the reason I didn't tie it in the whole way at the bottom, it seems like whenever I'm using tinsel and I tie it in at the bottom, it just somehow will always create um, a tag end. That tinsel will always be showing. I'm not sure if I tie it in incorrectly, but I really have terrible luck when tying in tinsel at the base of a pattern like this. So I'm just going to tie this tinsel in forward. I'm going to put a little half hitch to lock everything and get it out of there. All right, so while I tie this tinsel in, what it's going to do, it's going to create this really shiny underbody. And you're really going to almost see this green glow while it's in the water. Now, is that something you want? I have no idea. That's truly up to you. For me, for a lot of my patterns, I like that. I really feel like that this caddis in the emerger stage, that will really help set it off. As you're winding this forward, you want to make sure that you don't, uh, that you keep all these wraps nice and tight and sectioned correctly. So you'll want to occasionally look at the back side of the fly. Fortunately or unfortunately, you guys get to see the back side of the fly. So if, if I'm making a mistake, you are seeing it. So I will really try my darndest not to. All right, once I get to this point, I'm going to, um, so I'm, I'm directly above that hook point, maybe a little bit forward, that's okay. And I'm going to tie off my vinyl rib. Just put a couple wraps there. And I'll stop. And I'd like to show you one that I've tied without um, that little piece of tinsel underneath. So here's a finished clown shoe caddis. This one does not have that tinsel underbody, yet that's the same vinyl rib on both of these patterns. So you can see how the original pattern, which is in my hand right now, wow, that's a lot darker compared to the one um, that's in my vise. Now remember, there are lights on that, so that's really helping to set that, that pattern off that has the tinsel, but you have to decide what's best for you. I can tell you that um, the nice thing about tying with a clear uh, vinyl rib, it, then the, the body of the fly will be dictated by the color of your thread. But if you kind of experiment with some of these vinyl ribs and put that um, that tinsel underneath it, you can really get some colors that just seem to take off in the water. So keep that in mind. Again, this is the original pattern that's in my hand, but I want to show you just a little tip uh, that I have regarding this material. All right, I have it, my uh, thread stopped uh, directly above the hook point. I'm just going to zoom out and show you what's going on next. I'm going to grab just a little clump of deer hair. I'm going to tie this deer hair in. This is going to represent the caddis wing. I do not want a lot of deer hair. I'm going to be really with the philosophy that less is more. I fish in the um, eastern United States, and I believe that when the fish see a lot of stuff going on, and they see a lot of excess material, um, it really gets them thinking about that pattern and really deciding if it's a real bug or not. 
on the original pattern, they, they really call for a relatively generous clump of deer hair. And I believe that's a that's a great thing if you're fishing this this fly as a, we'll call it a caddis and a dropper. So you'd fish this as the dry fly and you'd have a dropper tied off the bend of the hook. Typically I don't, thus I like to put on a smaller wing because I don't have to worry about it floating the fly as much. All right, let me zoom this back in. I got my, um, I have my deer hair in my stacker. I just pull that out, grab the clump of deer hair, Okay, and then I'm going to place this directly above um, the hook just to measure everything out. Whenever you're tying in a caddis wing, most um, most tires will tie the, the tips of the wing just past the body. However, being that this is an emerger, I want it going back about three quarters of the way. So I'm going to stop it around three quarters of the way back, pinch it with my left hand, see that excess fluff, wrap once, two, and then really wrap relatively aggressive towards the back. Okay, so I have my deer hair locked in now. I want to get those butt ends out of there. Okay. Those aren't trimmed the greatest, but that will do. Looks like there's one piece that got cut there. All right, after I got those, I have those trimmed out of the way, I'm just going to wrap through them, making sure everything's nice and secure. I'm going to stop at that point, and I'm going to tie in my, uh, my indicator or my post. I'm going to be using McFly foam for this. I'll zoom out again so you can see what's going on. Uh, so this is the post that, that this pattern calls for. Um, if you use an entire clump, gosh, you're really using a lot. What I like to do is pull out about a quarter to a fifth of the clump. See, this stuff is just crazy. Around this, this much of a section and double it over. Um, you're going to be using this McFly foam to for a couple things you're gonna it, it will help the pattern float but you're also going to use it as an indicator so you can see this fly um, because it kind of will sit low in the water so I have my piece of McFly foam if you take this piece pull it under and go up it tends to build up the head and the thorax a little bit so this is a, a, a great example uh, of, of a situation where you can take the, the foam push it underneath your thread and place it directly on top of the hook that way so that's how I typically tie this in, just so that McFly foam is locked on top. You'll see it tries to curl back up, and that's okay. Just place a couple wraps behind it and in front of it. If you want to make make one helicopter helicopter type wrap, you can. But you just don't you don't want to tie this in necessarily like a parachute post because that's not its objective. Right, I'll just stop it at that point. If you do want to trim the top, you can. It's truly up to you uh, where you take this from that point. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, though, is to, however, tie in a hackle. The hackle that I like to use is a grizzly-style hackle for this, uh, for the hackle at the front. I have an olive uh, grizzly hackle that I'll be using for this specific, this specific pattern. I also just like regular grizzly color and also dun-colored hackles. So I'm just going to tie this hackle in on my side of the hook. You can see that McFly foam just jumping all over the place. All right, after I have that going back, I'm then going to dub the front of it. I have a little bit of um, SLF squirrel dubbing. It's got some awesome guard hair sticking out, and I like that for this emerger style. I'm just going to dub it. This is a dark brown color. You do have a, a, a little bit of room. I'm using that size 14 hook, so that really kind of helps things out when I'm using this. Okay, I'm just going to dub from the back. I'm going to check out the bottom, make sure I have uh, everything covered. Looks like I have everything dubbed behind the McFly foam, so I'll add just a little bit more of the SLF and dub just directly in front of it, then stop. Okay. I just want to cover all that pink stuff. Okay, then I've left just a great amount of room to tie off my thread. Okay, at this point, I'm going to pull my McFly foam forward, and I'm going to try to place approximately two or three wraps behind that indicator. Then I'll pull it back, try to place one or two wraps in front of it. So there's one, this is my second. I'll stop, hold the hackle straight up, place a locking wrap on it. There's a second, there's a third. Now I'm gonna pull everything um, back towards the back of the fly. Before I do that, I'll just reposition this in the hook just so you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so there's 
the front of the fly, I'm just going to pull everything back, straight back like this, place a couple wraps in front, I'm holding everything, then I'll place one quick half hitch, now everything's locked in, and then I'll place a whip finish. like to place a little head cement on this fly, you absolutely may. Okay, then I, I'll grab my scissors, I have my thread out of there. Um, if you have any hackle kind of jutting out of there, just, you know, just get a nice little trim or grab your hackle pliers. I'm going to pull my hackle forward, get that out of the way. Next, I'm going to take the McFly foam, pull it relatively tight, and trim directly at the tips. It will just jump right back down, giving you an excellent indicator. Then I'm going to finally turn this pattern upside down and trim straight back. I'm going to trim those hackles at, out of the bottom of the fly. By doing that, I'll allow this fly to sit relatively flush on the water. All right, this is a look at the finished Clown Shoe Caddis, aka the Boulder Creek Caddis by Jay Zimmerman. Now, this is an Emerger Caddis, and that's what it's representing. To go over this fly right now, we have that Larva Lace, aka or the, the Vinyl Rib, for the body, which will allow this pattern to sit down in the water. Um, next, we have our deer elk hair wing jutting out, acting like that caddis wing. We have some hackle that was trimmed flush by trimming that hackle flush. That allows this pattern to really sit a little bit uh, nicer on the water. And then we have this big McFly foam indicator, which will add some buoyancy plus act as an indicator for you to see this pattern. If you are going to be using this I'm in a dropper situation, that dropper will be tied off of the bend going straight down. Thus, don't be afraid to add a little bit more deer hair and a little bit more McFly foam because those will help and aid the buoyancy of this pattern. Again, special thanks will go out to Allen Fly Fishing uh, for their this hook. This is the N203BL. That BL means it's barbless. It's a shrimp and caddis pupa hook. I tied this one on a size 14, though you can tie it anywhere between sizes uh, 12 to uh, even down to 18. Thanks as always for viewing these YouTube tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on my YouTube page or this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody.